Millions of years before the great dinosaurs, monsters of a different sort ruled the world. Strange sailback creatures like these for our ancient ancestors. Skeletons hidden in our closet. As paleontologists dig up new clues, modern technology sheds new light on the distant past. Meet a member of our family as we unearth the bizarre tale of the sail. miles northwest of Fort Worth lie the Texas Redbeds. This shabby stretch of land in Archer City County, Texas, gets its name from the dusty red soil and the punishing heat. By noon, the hot July sun will bake the earth to a temperature of more than 110 degrees. Rattlesnakes, scorpions, and other poisonous creatures make their home here. One touch from this centipede's legs can prove lethal. Deadly creatures roam this valley millions of years before the dinosaurs. For two decades, paleontologist Tim Rowe has been studying the creatures of this period. Today, Rowe and his team of paleontologists brave the elements, searching for clues that will bring them face to face with the fiercest creature ever to inhabit the red beds, Dimetrodon. A reptile known for the enormous sail on its back. When Dimetrodon ruled the Texas red beds, the land was fertile and wet. Today, Dimetrodon's remains litter the rocky, barren landscape. The soil here is so rich in fossils that each new rainstorm exposes new specimens. If you don't know what to look for, you might miss them. But Tim Rowe easily spots the backbone of a Dimetrodon lying in the dust. That's another Dimetrodon vertebra. Yeah, sure looks like one. Yeah, just got a big keel down the ventral. Soon, this one small bone from a Dimetrodon's spine leads to an even bigger find a skeleton that includes part of the animal's sail. That's really a beautiful specimen. It's wonderful to be able to come out here in just a few hours see something like this, something I've never seen before, and not have to sweat for the entire summer, you know, and just dig into the ground in a couple hours, and there it is. It's really wonderful. Bit by bit, these discoveries are writing a story that affects us all. More than just a simple reptile, not quite a dinosaur, this monster, Dimetrodon, is also our ancient forefather. The story of Dimetrodon and its descendants is also our story. It's our own family history, and we can track it very deeply back into time. Uh, most people think of human history in terms of a few millions of years and our relationships to apes, but we can track our own history from a form like this back nearly 300 million years to an animal like this, like Dimetrodon here. Armed with a powerful jaw and razor-sharp teeth, this deadly predator grew up to 12 feet long, the size of a hippopotamus. With innovation, such as the sail on its back, Dimetrodon and its close relatives represent a new kind of creature, more advanced than earlier reptiles, but not quite a mammal. These proto-mammals, as they are called, were the prototypes that set the stage for mammal and ultimately human development. This distant ancestor is the oldest portrait in our family album. He lived more than 280 million years ago, a time known as the Permian period. Animals competed violently for survival. Success required some sort of advantage. Dimetrodon's advantage was as plain as the sail on his back. The sail of Dimetrodon is a really interesting feature. It's made up of a series of tall spines like this that form a big sail extending behind the skull of the animal. 
There's no animal alive that has a feature anything like this, and so its function is really controversial. There are basically two ideas on what the sail is for. The first, and probably most widely accepted, is that it's a heat radiator. It uh, is for gaining or losing heat more quickly. The second one is for sex. Was Dimitrodon's enormous sail simply a way to impress a date? Nicholas Houghton doesn't think so. Here at the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C., he studied mammal-like reptiles for decades. He thinks the sail was used to regulate body temperature. The sail probably functioned as both a radiator and a heat absorber. As a heat absorber, it would, would allow an animal to warm, warm up faster than the animals were not so equipped. And if it was a predator, it would get going after lunch more quickly. If it were prey, it could get out of the way faster. And so it probably got pretty hot, too. And this would be a problem with an animal as big as Dimetrodon. And to get rid of extra excess heat, it would simply turn so that the sail was parallel with the rays of the sun, and its higher temperature would then be radiated off into the air, and it could cool off. Others, such as maverick paleontologist Robert Baca, disagree. The people who want to make anything sticking out of the body a cooling mechanism should watch more animals in a zoo. Things that stick out of your head or stick out of your back are nearly always used first to intimidate rivals, sexual rivals. Second, maybe as a radiator. But the main reason for moose antlers or finbacks is to intimidate your rivals. Though opinions about Dimetrodon's sail may differ, most scientists agree that Dimetrodon and its relatives mark a key step between the cold-bloodedness of reptiles and the warm-bloodedness of mammals. Reptiles rely on the sun to raise their metabolism. They're cold-blooded. Without the sun's warming rays, they become slow, still, and helpless. But mammals, like us, have more sophisticated internal machinery. We can generate the energy our bodies require no matter what time of the day it is. We're warm-blooded. Warm-bloodedness is like keeping your house warm by opening all the windows and turning the thermostat way up, constantly producing a lot of heat, most of which flies out the window, but you keep your house warm. The reason it's an advantage is you're ready for any sort of situation. If it suddenly gets cold, suddenly starts raining, suddenly gets dark or, or cloudy, you've got so much body heat, you can keep your body temperature high. So warm-bloodedness is the best way to be ready for any challenge. Dimetrodon used its sail to warm itself earlier in the morning. Other reptiles its size might take two hours to warm up. Dimetrodon could get moving in half that time. While potential reptilian prey waited for their blood to warm, Dimetrodon hunted. Then, as now, the early bird got the worm. Its victims included other proto-mammals, such as Ophiacodon. It was perhaps the largest land animal of the Carboniferous period 300 million years ago. It grew up to 15 feet long and crawled along the ground on stunted legs. Ophiacodon means snake teeth. It was named for its teeth, which curved backwards as a snake's. But neither its size nor its sharp teeth could protect it against the powerful jaws of the more advanced Dimetrodon. The lizard-like Ophiacodon and its kin gave rise to two lines of sailback reptiles. One included the small plant-eating Adaphosaurus, an evolutionary dead end. From the other line sprang Dimetrodon. Its success at temperature regulation provided the mammal-like reptiles with an early and powerful lead against the true reptiles. A battle for dominance of the planet was just beginning.